Hi there, I'm Mr. Sand, and I want to walk you through this guided inquiry lab. Um, it all revolves around this momentum um, simulation that I'm going to show you right here. So if I here's the instructions that are right in front of you. Um, the guided inquiry lab investigate this question: How does a mass of ball one affect the final velocity of ball one after an elastic collision with a static ball two? Um, so this is referring to a stimulation that I'm going to show you in just a second. So it says up here, first go to the simulation, become familiar with it, then test and record your measurements with at least three conditions in which you've only changed the mass of ball one. And there's a URL. You will not need to run several trials with the same initial conditions since this is a simulation, but record, uh, report your data with correct uncertainty in your measurements. You will not need to present your lab report. Just write it here, the formal lab report guidelines in the down below, just like all the labs. So let's talk about the simulation. Here it is. Um, so if you just click on the link, um, you'll be sent right here. And you don't need to worry about the advanced simulation here because this just shows you at an angle and it shows you extra data if you want to. Now, if you want to do this, I guess you could go to this second dimension right here if you want to. Um, you could have a reflecting border, you can have a center of mass, um, momentum diagram, you can have all this stuff if you really, really want to. Um, but I'm what I'm showing you right here is all advanced stuff. You don't need to do any of this advanced stuff. You can just do the introduction and you would be fine because the only things that we need to measure here, we gotta do data, more data, are mass and velocity. And this diagram shows everything that we need to show. So again, you don't need to go to the advanced tab up here. You can if you want to, but then you'd have to play around with a couple of things, which is fine. But you don't need to do that. All you need is the introduction. So the introduction is right here. Now you can change the velocity of either of these balls if you want to, but we're concerned with ball one and ball two. We're going to start with ball one and its positions right here. It's fine. Its mass, well, 0.5 kilograms is fine with me. Um, its velocity is one meter per second. That's okay too. Um, critically here, ball two has no velocity. Now if we would change this velocity by moving this, just clicking and dragging it, we could do that. Or we could just type in the velocity down here. I'm just going to say it's zero. Okay, so it's zero right now. Uh, negative zero is the same as positive zero. Um, so to play this, we can, we can play it right now and you'll see what happens. It goes like this and boom. There it is. Now I'm positive right there because the final velocity is going to be the same since there's no friction showing this slowing this thing down. So the final velocity can be the same if I play it even more. It's still staying the same. You can see it's for both these balls it's uh, staying the same. For the red ball, which is the ball that we want to measure here, that's our that's our ball of interest, the velocity is negative 0.5 meters per second. Uh, so that would be something I would record. Now to change the mass, I can change the mass by changing the mass right here. I can change it to anything I want to. I can make it to 20 kilograms if I wanted to. And if we restart this, we start right here, and I'll just, ooh, I guess I can move the position of this guy. Let's move the position. How do I do that? Well, I'll just select over here without the velocity, and I'll move it closer. It doesn't matter what the starting position is since there's no friction here. So I'll do the same thing. So this would be a, another tr another condition. Uh, I just set that in motion, and boom. I notice that the initial velocity was the same. I didn't change that. But the final velocity is now this, which is 0.86 for number one and 1.86 for two. Uh, and notice over here, all these values, um, I can well, all these little boxes I can change if I want to. I can show all the vectors. I can show the center of mass. I can show the momentum diagram if I want to. I can show the kinetic energy. I can show all these values up here if I want to. I don't have to. Um, those are all extra. Now, I've just described to you two conditions already. Um, to make this lab report. Um, I would only need one more condition for all my data, and this is for three weeks of work. Um, so this is definitely a, uh, a lab report you want to take your time on just so you can uh, you can make sure that everything's perfect and there's no problem with it. Now, I haven't said anything about uncertainty here, but you can guess what the uncertainty would be since this is a digital um, scale or a digital readout of your measurements. You can think about what that would be if I would use mass in this case, it says 20.00. So the uncertainty in the mass for this ball right here would be 
20.00 plus or minus 0 0.01 kilograms. The velocity right here is uh, also read out digitally, so that could be uh, plus or minus 0 0.01 meters per second. Um, if you want to use in terms of momentum, you can. If that helps your descriptions and your um, interpretations of this data, that's fine. We've covered momentum, so you should be pretty comfortable with that. Um, so yeah. Uh, the last thing I just need to say is that we're not doing an inelastic collision, we're doing an elastic collision. So if we were doing an inelastic, we'd push it all the way over here on this little slider bar, but we are staying an elastic, so we just leave it all the way over there. Okay, so I hope this helped. Uh, and let me know if you have any questions on how to run this lab, but just playing around with this for a few seconds, you should you should be able to get a, uh, a lot of data. And I just say three trials or three conditions is the minimum. You could do more than that if you wanted to. That might be, uh, that might be better, actually, to give you a better picture of what's going on here if you increase the mass of ball one, what would happen to the final mass, or I'm sorry, the final velocity of ball one. So it's up to you, um, but three is the minimum. All right, that's all I have. Bye for now.